Autogen Studio is here. The Microsoft research team behind Autogen, the revolutionary AI agent project, has finally released Autogen Studio, which allows you to create sophisticated AI agent teams with ease. It's a fully open source project. You can run it locally. You could power it with ChatGPT and you can also power it with local models. Everything from plotting stock charts to planning trips to writing code. This is what ChatGPT's custom GPTs were supposed to be. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it, how to set it up and how to use it both with GPT-4 and local models. So let's go. First, the only thing you're going to need to get this to work with ChatGPT as the powering model is Conda. So if you don't already have Conda installed, it's a super easy way to manage Python environments, which is always a headache otherwise. So if you don't already have it installed, go ahead and install it now, it's very easy. So the first command we're gonna run is to create a new Conda environment. And I'm gonna say Conda create dash N AG for autogen. And then we're gonna use Python equals 3.11. And then just hit enter. It's gonna ask you if you wanna proceed, just hit enter again. And it's gonna install all the packages that we need. All right, once you're done there, you're gonna highlight this code right here to activate the new environment. So go ahead and highlight it, paste it, and it's conda activate AG and then hit enter. And you could tell it's activated now because it says AG right there. Next, and this really couldn't be easier, we're gonna install Autogen Studio. And by installing Autogen Studio, we get everything with Autogen as well as the user interface. So it's pip install Autogen Studio. And remember this installs to the environment that we just created. So if you deactivate this environment or you switch environments, it's not gonna be available there. So hit enter and it installs everything we need. Next, open up your OpenAI account, go to the API key section, and we're going to create a new key. And I'm going to call it AG for Autogen and then create secret key. I am going to revoke this key before publishing the video. Go ahead and click copy, switch back to your terminal. And now we're going to export the OpenAI key, setting it in our environment, which allows Autogen to access it. And to do that, we're going to type export OpenAI underscore API underscore key, all capitalized equals, and then you're going to paste in your newly created key. Then just hit enter. Next, we're going to spin up Autogen Studio now. We're pretty much done. So just type Autogen Studio space UI dash dash port 8081 and then hit enter and then it's going to spin up autogen studio for us and provide us with a url and here we go it's localhost 8081 so we're going to copy this url right here switch over to your browser and now this is autogen studio it is absolutely gorgeous and it's super easy to use and i'm going to show you how to do all of it now that's really all you need to do to get autogen studio working with chat gpt a little bit later in this video i'm going to show you how to set it up with local models including powering individual agents with different models it's pretty amazing Amazing. And the first tab we're going to start on is built, just so I can tell you about all the different terminology. So first, let's talk about skills. Skills are tools that you can give your AI agents and AI agent teams. They can be anything, but they're usually written in code. So there are three by default here, generate images. And if I click into this, we can see this is actually just the code for generating images. And what it does is it sets up a method that hits the OpenAI Dolly endpoint and generates an image. And then it returns the image. And that's it. And now any agent can use this generate images tool. We also have find papers on archive. So if I click into there, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's going to accept a query and it's gonna return papers that are found on the archive website. Now you can probably imagine how amazingly powerful this really is. You can give it tools for anything. Any API that you can connect with, you can give it tools for. And not only APIs, you can give it instructions to accomplish pretty much any task. And where my mind starts going is connecting it to a service like Zapier. And then all of a sudden you have integrations into so many different applications and you can mix and match them and accomplish incredibly sophisticated tasks through giving Zapier integrations as tools to your agents. So this is what you do. So let's click new skill. And it's as simple as that. You give it a name and then you write out the code for your actual skill. So we're not gonna do that, but that's how you would accomplish it. Next are agents. And this is the most obvious one. An agent is just an individual AI that has a role, tools, and can perform tasks. So by default, it comes with two, primary assistant and user proxy. This mimics the autogen framework for when we didn't have a user interface. So user proxy, you can think of as you, the user. And the user can actually jump in and give input or not give input at all and let the Autogen team accomplish the task 
completely autonomously. The primary assistant is also exactly what it sounds like. It's another AI agent that doesn't represent the actual user and it's completely autonomous. It can write and run code, it can use tools, it takes on a role, a description, everything. And I'll show you how to create a new agent in a little bit. And by the way, this is also where you specify which model the agent is gonna use, whether you wanna use ChatGPT4 or you wanna use a local model. Next is workflows. And a workflow puts everything together, including the team and the task you want to accomplish. So here's a travel agent group workflow. Let's click that. So we name it a group chat workflow. So we have some options for summary method, which is just defining the method to summarize the conversation. And we can just say last, none, or LLM. And then we have the sender and the receiver. And this is really important. The sender is usually gonna be user proxy, although it can change if you get more complex teams. And then the receiver is gonna be the group chat manager. So whenever you have more than two agents, more than just a user and an assistant agent, that's when you start to use the group chat manager. And I can even click into the group chat manager. And here is where I can add all of the agents into this group chat. So I have the primary assistant, the local assistant, and the language assistant. I give the group chat manager a name. I can give it a description. I can give it max consecutive auto replies. And if a lot of this stuff seems foreign to you, check out my video where I break down autogen in detail and define and show you how to use all of these different settings because they are important. I'll drop that link in the description below. Human input mode. So we have never only on terminate or always on every step. Here we have our system message where we can actually just say group chat manager or we can define a more complex system message which helps control the agent behavior. Then here is where we can define our model. We can add multiple models and it's gonna daisy chain them together. So it's gonna start with GPT-4 here. And if I added another one, it would fall back to that if for whatever reason GPT-4 didn't work. So remember, whatever the first model is here in the list, that's gonna be your default model. And unfortunately, I couldn't figure out a way to drag and reorder the models. So you'll actually have to just delete it and add it in order. Then down here is where you can add skills. And remember the skills are pieces of code that the agents can run. So go ahead and click that. And we have, for example, this generate images and we can just add the skill like that. And now this agent, the group chat manager, has the skill of generate images. And then down here it says, or replace with an existing agent. So we can just say that and it'll fill out everything for us. So then when we're done with that, we click okay, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna save it. Next we have the playground and this is actually where you going to be testing out the different agent teams. So you can think of a session as a fixed amount of time where an agent team goes to accomplish a task. And the cool thing is, I believe this is asynchronous. So let's go ahead and click and create a new session. I'll show you how to do the Mistral workflow in a bit because that's a local model, but let's do visualization agent workflow. And we can see all agent workflows here if we want, but let's go back and let's choose the visualization agent workflow. Then we click create and there we go. Now from here, we can publish it to the web, which is really cool. We can delete it. And this is where we give it the task we want it to complete. So let's say stock price, plot a chart of Nvidia and Tesla stock price for 2023, save the result to a file named Nvidia Tesla PNG. So now it's pinging GPT-4 to do that. And you can see it's working by this little waiting icon right here. Now. One thing I would have liked is if it streamed the results to this window, but it seems like it waits till it's completely done before showing the result. All right, there. So that is, again, one thing that I'd like to see a little bit different is I wanna see each step being output because the only way to really tell anything is happening is if I switch over to my terminal and I actually watch the output. So you can see all the output here. This is what Autogen typically looks like. And then the UI just puts it in a really pretty interface. So let's scroll to the top. Sure, here's the result of your request, okay? So we can see the different agent messages going back and forth. So the user proxy says, so this is the user agent representing me. So plot the chart of Nvidia and Tesla. Then we have the visualization assistant, which creates the plan to actually do that, writes the code. So here's the code that it just wrote. So the visualization assistant says, please run the above script to fetch the stock data. Once the data is fetched, save it to stockdata.csv. So it does that. The user proxy says, okay, done and fetched and saved. Then the visualization assistant says, great, now we can run the visualization of it. And then the user proxy runs that code and saves it to NVIDIA Tesla.png. And then here's the results. So we have the stock data.csv file. We have the PNG, which is the actual visualization of the stock price over time. We have the plot stock chart.py file, which is the code to do it. And we have the fetch stock data.py also. And the nice thing is, 
you can easily turn these into tools so that it doesn't have to recreate these tools next time. And so currently it doesn't look like you can do it in a one click way. What you would do is you would go back to build, go to skills, create a new skill, and essentially copy paste what's in here back into a skill on this page right here. But that's it, that shows how to do it, and it is incredible. I find that Autogen Studio makes it a lot easier to manage your tools, most of all. I always found that tool usage from the Autogen code was a little bit difficult. And let's try one more thing. Let's create new, and I'm gonna do travel agent group workflow, create and I'm gonna click paint here. Let's see what it does. Paint a picture of a glass of Ethiopian coffee, freshly brewed and a tall glass cup. So obviously this is gonna be using Dolly. I'm gonna switch over to terminal and we're gonna watch it actually work. So here it is, the user proxy agent saying that's what it's gonna do. Okay, so it's saying I'm unable to physically paint a picture. So what that is telling me is that my agent team doesn't actually have the right tool to do that. So let's give it that tool. So to fix this problem, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use a different agent team that actually has the paint skill. So let's go back to build and let's look at the general agent workflow. Now we can see it has a sender of user proxy and a primary assistant receiver with two skills. If I click into there, I can see one of those skills is generate images. So that should be good to actually generate a picture. And we can see the daisy chain of different models that it's using. So first it's using GPT-4. So let's go ahead and try it now. So we'll go back to playground. I'm gonna create a new session. I'm gonna use the general agent workflow, create, and then I'm gonna say paint. And now hopefully this works. All right, switching over to the terminal, it does look like it generated the image and let's see what happened. There it is, perfect. That's exactly what I asked for. Wonderful, so you can see it is important you think about which tools are assigned to which agents, which agent teams, if you're asking it to do specific things that using that tool. And we can also look at the Pi file and we can actually see the code that it wrote to generate that image. And so now I like that one. If I just click publish, it says session successfully published. I go over to gallery and now I can find that session. I just click here and open it up and I can actually see what just happened. All right, now I wanna show you how to use this completely locally. And what you're gonna need for that is two things, Olama and Light LLM. Olama is a wonderful tool that allows you to power models locally super easily. And Light LLM is a wrapper to expose an API. Even if you don't understand what any of that means, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna show you how to use it, it's dead simple. So we're gonna switch back to our terminal. We're gonna create a new tab right here. We're gonna use the same Conda environment. So Conda activate AG, hit enter. Now it's activated. And the first thing you're gonna do is install Olama and it really could not be easier. Go to olama.ai, click download and go through the installation process. I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it right now, but it's dead simple. When you're done, you should see a little llama icon in your task tray. And that's it. Now to download a model, what we're gonna do is type Olama run Mistral, and we're gonna download the Mistral model. Now I already have it downloaded, so it's not gonna download it again for me, but when you run this, it will download it, and it's about four gigabytes. So I hit enter just to make sure it's working, and there it is. So I can just test it with tell me a joke. Okay, perfect. So there it is, now we know this is Mistral running completely locally. Okay, now we're gonna open up another tab, Again, we're gonna use the same Conda environment. And by the way, you don't actually need to keep this Olama instance open anymore, but it doesn't matter if you do or don't. So over here, we're gonna switch back to Conda Activate AG, perfect. And now we're gonna install Light LLM. So pip install Light LLM dash dash upgrade, just in case you already have it and you need to upgrade it. Hit enter. Now, one issue that I ran into that I already fixed and I probably won't run into it again, but I wanna show you it is it said that it was missing a module. And the module that was missing is called G Unicorn. And I don't know why it wasn't installed as part of the light LLM package, but it wasn't. So all I had to do to fix that was pip install G Unicorn. So if you get an error where G Unicorn can't be found, that's how to fix it. Now to set up a server with Mistral running powered by Olama, this is all you do. Light LLM dash dash model Olama slash Mistral, and then hit enter. And there we go, we're all ready to go. And we can see that the server is spun up right here. It's localhost 8000. So we're gonna go ahead, copy that URL. Now switch back to Autogen. Now we're gonna go back to the build tab. Then I'm gonna go to agents. And I already have the Mistral assistant, so I'm gonna delete that as well. And now I'm gonna create a new agent first. And it's gonna be a Mistral agent. So I'm gonna say Mistral 
assistant, agent description, helpful assistant powered by Mistral locally, max consecutive auto replies. I'm going to leave that there. Human input mode, never, and a system message. And I'm just going to keep it simple. You are a helpful assistant. Now, right here, you can see it's defaulting to GPT-4. So go ahead and get rid of that. We're going to click add. And this is where we actually tell it to be powered by the local Mistral model. So here, I'm going to call it Mistral. You don't need an API key. The base URL, we're going to click paste. This is that local URL that we just copied. Everything else we do not need. And then we're going to click add model. We're not going to give it any skills now, but feel free to do that when you're testing it. Then click OK. Now we have a Mistral Assistant powered by Mistral. And the cool thing is I can also have a Mistral Assistant and I can also have a Naus Hermes Assistant and they can all run at the same time. It is truly incredible. Now let's go to workflows. We're going to create a new workflow. And we're going to say this is a Mistral workflow. Workflow description, we'll leave that the same. Summary method, that's fine. User proxy, that's fine. And this is going to be GPT-4 powered. So if you did want to have the user proxy locally powered, go to the user proxy agent and switch out GPT-4 for Mistral. Then as the receiver, we're going to change that. So we're going to change the receiver to be the Mistral assistant. And so for the agent name, we're going to call it Mistral assistant. Agent description, I'm going to leave it blank for now. Again, feel free to customize this as much as you want. Human input mode, never. This is the system message that is used for Autogen, so I'm not going to touch this. Then we're going to delete GPT-4 here. We're going to add a new model again. We're going to say it's Mistral. Same thing, localhost 8000 right there. And then we're going to click Add Model. We're not going to give it any skills, and we're just going to click OK, then OK again. Now we have a Mistral agent. We have a Mistral workflow. We should be able to use it powered by Mistral. So let's go to the playground. We're going to click New. We select Mistral workflow and then Create. And then let's say, tell me a joke, just to see if it works. Hit Enter. And there we can actually see that it worked. So there's the post to chat completions. And this is the light LLM, so it should have worked. And it did, although it did not tell me anything good. <laughs> That's fine. Let's see it accomplish something a little bit more difficult. Write code to output numbers 1 to 100. Okay, there it is. So it was extremely fast. Switching back over to the terminal, we can see that it actually did post to chat completion, so it worked. And there's the code. And here's the termination messages. So user proxy says write code to output numbers 1 to 100. The Mistral Assistant writes the code and sends terminate, which terminates everything. And so that's it. Now you know how to power Autogen Studio with a local model. And what if you did want to have different models for different agents? To do that, we come back here over to Olama, exit out of there. And so what you would do is Olama run Llama 2. That'll initiate the download. And once it's done downloading with Olama, we can leave this light LLM that's running Mistral up. Then we create a new tab. Then we conda activate AG. Light LLM dash dash model Olama slash Llama 2. Hit enter. It'll give you a new URL. And you do the same exact thing. You come in here, go to build, set up a new agent as llama assistant and then you input the url as normal then you set up the same workflow as normal and you're done now you have different assistants powered by different local models and you can plug and play as you see fit the best part is you can find the right fine-tuned model for the right task and one last thing i want to mention is it actually has this sign out functionality but when you click it it says please implement your own logout logic which means you can set up your own authentication within autogen studio so if you wanted to share this amongst your team you could set it up to do that. I am so impressed by Autogen Studio. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you want me to do any kind of follow-up or deeper dive into Autogen Studio, let me know what you want to see in the comments. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.